Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sibling Rivalry Podcast. Ashley and Aaron here. How's it going, guys? Haven't talked to you in a little bit, but I'm back. Um, uh, and I go by Ash. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we don't want the, the fans to be watching. So here's the deal. 2019 has gotten off to an insane start. An insane and just like very random start. Um, I think that when you said the fans were watching, they literally are watching. <laughs> I never would have thought in my lifetime that I would see Aunt Becky behind bars. <laughs> Not Aunt Becky. Not Aunt Becky. When I was a little... So we're talking, obviously, we're talking about the college scandal that happened with uh, Felicity Huffman, my favorite desperate housewife, <laughs> and um, Aunt Becky, Lori Laughlin, um, daughter daughters uh going to usc and how they were paying off people etc so so many questions i had about this i have literally been obsessed with the story (laughs) since tuesday when it broke was it tuesday i think it was tuesday so so let's unpack this because i'm really curious we're both really interested and invested in this story for a variety of different reasons for me I'm a perpetual student, so I love oh, school. Yeah. I love college. <laughs> but Ashley, so that's why I think it's interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know. I'm not curious, I know. But this sort of behavior, has this isn't new. People have been buying their way in, into universities for a long time. But for you, I want to know why, why is this of particular interest? This is a particular interest of, to me because, one, Aunt Becky got arrested. Like, okay, <laughs> like. One with the star by it. I'm back. He got arrested. <laughs> Two, Felicity Hoffman is out here <laughs> sending emails that say, Uh oh. <laughs> she really? I missed that part. Uh, how could you miss that? <laughs> sending emails saying, Ruh, roll as she is trying to scam the system so her daughter can get a 16 or a 14, 20 on the ACT. Third of all, what? Like, it makes no sense. Like, First of all, you don't even, if you're rich, you don't, the secret is you don't have to go to college. (laughs) That's the gag. You don't have to do this. What is the purpose? College is for middle class people that want to extenuate their, or to move to the uh, next class up. And hell, you can't even do that now, student (laughs) loan. So why, why do these people care so much? I know why they care so much. It's bragging rights. It's all bragging rights. Um, And I'm not discouraging people from going to college, but if you're rich, you don't have to go to college. And really what this boils down to, and I heard this on another podcast, so shout out to the other podcast. I think it was called, it was the one you sent me, I can't remember. It might have been Channel 33 on The Ringer, uh, Bill Simmons' The Ringer podcast. But all this boils down to is these women, these parents, they go to these fancy dinner parties, you know, and they say, oh, Brian's doing this and Katie's doing this. And they don't want to be the parent that's like, oh, my child isn't going to a Yale or or Harvard or Stanford or whatever. And so that's it's it's really an ego thing. It's like my kid needs to fall in line with our brand as a family. You know, we're of the elite. We don't go to Indiana State University. No knock to Indiana State University, but that's just not like a knock. It's it's not a knock. It's not a knock. Trust me, it's not a knock. But I'm just saying, trying to make a point. It's not you, you have to be at a Harvard or a Yale to uphold this image of elite status. I get it. But like the whole thing was like, first of all, everything is a sham. Yeah. First and foremost, the FBI is acting like nobody's going to scam their way into college. <laughs> Child, please. People been scamming <laughs> their way into college since the beginning of time. The only real problem, the only illegal thing is that they paid the wrong people. All you had to do was pay the school. It would have been fine. <laughs> USC was going to let Felicity Hoffman daughter in. Like, come on. Who doesn't like William H. Macy and Felicity Hoffman? All she had to do was say she was going to be an actress. Come on. Like, <laughs> like, seriously. And then, uh, now, I will say, I don't know about this YouTuber, Olivia J. Like, <laughs> I didn't even know who the hell she was, but apparently she has a huge following on like YouTube. Everybody else. Everybody's an influencer now. <laughs> So, like, clearly this girl has said over and over and over again, I don't like school. <laughs> Stop forcing your kid to go to school. Now she ain't going to school at all now. You can kick her ass out because she embarrassed by y'all. You know the thing that was so oh funny? And this is what um, someone on, on the radio calls F, uh, Facebook. Radio. F- <laughs> I'm sorry, someone on the internet <laughs> calls FBI, Facebook, and Instagram. So the internet has pulled up this interview of Lori Laughlin just beaming that her daughter's going to UHC and how she's... U.S. You, I'm sorry, USC. And how she's just so, you know, she gets so emotional talking about it because, you know, her daughter's going to, to USC and she's going away and blah, 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 blah. Knowing damn well she cheated her ass to get in that school 
And then the funny thing about all of this, you know, they fired her from Fuller House. Yeah. And the Hallmark Channel. I'm like, you cannot get more wholesome than the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> And I'm Becky over here running with the feds, man. I can't believe this. <laughs> and then some of the schools, because not all of them were USC. So, like, I, so USC, granted, I don't, like, USC to me is just bragging rights. I think it's, I, I know it's a good school, but it's not Harvard. Like, the way these people are like, you have to go to USC. It's like, <laughs> is UCLA that bad? Like, <laughs> like, what is, like, calm down, people. And then uh, some of the other schools were like, University, like there's a Harvard or it was Yale for sure, Stanford. So like those like elite schools, and then one school, San Diego State. I'm like San Diego State. Like <laughs> I love San Diego. I think it's one of the most gorgeous places on earth. It is. But are we scamming our way into San Diego State? Like <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like where are the limits? Like, <laughs> I mean, I, that makes no sense to me. So the next question is: Will these people go to jail? I don't know. It could go either way. It could go the way, like, because this is going to take a while to resolve itself. Six or seven months down the line, nobody's going to remember this. They might do a plea deal, call it a day. Um, Or they could, the judge could be like, you're going to make an example. I'm going to make an example of you all and put them in jail. I mean, if I'm Felicity Huffman, I'm like, I'm not going to jail. I just gave 15K. (laughs) Like... Lori Lockton just dropped half a million, okay? She needs to go to jail if anybody needs to go to jail. <laughs> her and her Mosey Mo. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the irony behind this is that someone had dug up where Mosey Mo, whatever the hell his name is, it's like people need to work harder. I'm paraphrasing something like that. People, the problem with people nowadays is they don't pull themselves up by the bootstraps. It's those same people that's cheating their way through life. But then this, this, this also prompts another question. What is the point of privilege and wealth and money? I mean, like, in the back <clears throat> of my head, it's like, hey, if I had that type of money, would I not? If somebody's like, get your kid in the yard, Harvard, give me 1500 or 15000 here you go. Like, do what you need <laughs> to do. Like, I'm not saying I'm above that. If he's like, hey, we're going to cheat the SATs, and like, I don't want any part of that. Yeah. That's a different thing. But if you know somebody and then know somebody, you need fifteen k. here you go. Like, <laughs> I don't, you know, it's just... It, it, they paid the wrong person. That's all this is. Bottom and, line. And speaking of, there's already a book out about this. How? I read on the Hollywood Reporter that somebody <laughs> has wrote a book in record time. <laughs> How do you write and publish a book in four days? And who knows? I don't know if this is self-published, but it is. It is. Go to the Hollywood Reporter. It's there. <laughs> it's, this story has so much content. It is so like so much content. I'm waiting into, on on a deep uh, on a deep dive podcast. To oh, break it's going to be podcasts. It's going to be documentaries. <laughs> I can't wait to Gail King interviews Felicity Hoffman. Like it's just <laughs> getting deep, and there is serious things. So they did take the spot of some kids that you know yeah. rightfully deserve to be there. But I think we all know that college has never been a meritocracy. Um, it's this, a business. All this, all this, excuse my language, all this shit is a business. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> We're um, going to rate this podcast PG-13. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's it's funny. It's just really, really funny to me. Uh, speaking of... Uh, and it's serious, too. Like, I don't want to trivialize it. No, I mean, but, it's serious, but you know, you got to find the laughter in some of this and stuff. And I, I have found a lot of laughter in this. <laughs> I uh, found a lot of laughter. So speaking of finding laughter, uh, we got to talk about Jesse Smollett. Oh my god first and foremost so let's start from the beginning what was this <laughs> so sometime in january uh, right before the polar vortex right before the polar vortex now mind you for people that aren't in chicago um we have had a very very long winter so even before the polar vo- vortex it was freezing outside and just so if you don't know the pol- polar vo- vortex it was literally like negative 30 degrees like yeah. before wind chill. like that was the temperature <laughs> negative 30 it was like not like oh it feels like negative 30 no <laughs> it was negative 30 degrees so like if you were outside you would have gotten frostbitten like no question about it right so you know we do our morning routines and and check TMZ and see on the news that breaking news, Jesse Smollett has been beaten up um, and attacked by MAGA. What is it? MAGA people, Donald Trump's people, whatever people that people that support Donald Trump. So initially you hear and it's like when I heard it, I was like, oh, man, that's terrible. It happened right by my house, too. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I live next to the rich and famous. <laughs> <laughs> and so but, you know, a few days had kind of went by and it was like, hmm, 
something ain't right about this story. Well, I think the one thing is that one, Jesse's famous. He is, but he's not like do MAGA people would not know who he is. <laughs> like you unless they were looking for him. Two, it had to be somebody he knows. I can understand getting hungry because that's the way I can confirm. That's the way it is open 24 hours a day. I can see getting hungry. Like, let me just run a subway real quick. Okay. But then that's some. So that means somebody had to know you're going to be a subway. They had to know who you were, first of all. Then they had to have a rope bleach. And what else? I think that was it. A rope, rope and bleach. bleach. And they had to just randomly have that on there. Right. And know that was you. Right, right, like, right. Like, ain't nobody walking home at 2 o'clock in the morning with a rope and bleach just waiting for somebody to walk across the street. Right. Like, that. so I'm like, okay, it had to be somebody he knows or somebody's following him. Like and and that, was my, that was my next next guess. Yeah. I was like, well, because the way he, he kind of positioned it, as I recall, is like it was a random attack. Like, someone had saw him and then saw that he was the Empire yeah, and, guy. and that's not random. Yeah, and I was like, okay, well, somebody he knew was an inside job. And then more details started to emerge. And then he went to L.A. and did a show and said, I'm the gay Tupac. Now that, I'm not going <laughs> to lie, folks. I was like, that's a red flag for me. And then second to that. What does that even mean? I don't know. I don't know what it means. But I'm like, if you are in this situation, you're not, the, the language didn't match up to, to whatever emotion that is associated with being attacked like that. So for me. That was a red flag. But previous to that, another red flag for me was him reading off the cue cards. It's like, hey, y'all, I just want to say this. And I'm like, if you're telling the truth, you don't need cue cards or index cards to tell you what to say. Because if you're saying, if what you're saying is true, you don't need to be reminded of anything. So to me, I thought that was a little suspect. Yeah, um, that didn't really bother me that much. Uh, the, the sto- I'm like, because... You know, I'm still thinking, like, maybe if somebody, maybe he pissed somebody off. Like, it has to be somebody he knows, somebody who knew where he was going to be at, etc. Um, so, I'm still thinking that. Where I really kind of went off the rails, so to say, was uh, at the Robin Roberts interview. Yeah. When yeah, he yeah. had on literally, like, a Girl Scout patch <laughs> of pants. And, and I had pointed this out to Ash. I was like, that was my third red flag. I was like, okay, so just to recap, you had the cards. You had him saying he's the gay Tupac. Then I was like, I don't think he's being, I don't think he's telling the truth. So then I watched the Robin Roberts. By the way, shout out to Robin Roberts, who liked uh, one of my Instagram comments on her page. We're basically I, best friends. We're basically best friends. She is just amazing. But anyway... I was like, the pins was, it, it was, it was, first of all, it felt like um, a panic interview. Like, okay, we got to clean this up. You need to talk to Robin Roberts. That was the kind of vibe I was getting. And then when I was looking at his outfit, it was like he had the, the, uh, as they say, what was it? The Girl Scout. Uh, it was like he had, like, you know, he had, girl, all, the like, pins, all the badges. All the badges. <laughs> all the badges to represent the causes he was he was fighting for. So he had the Black Fist. He had the LGBTQ uh, <laughs> pins. And I was just like, that. To me, that signal that you're trying to sell me something. It's kind of like when politicians, you know, give large speeches or when they're running for president, they show the um, American American. flag. It's like it was trying to convince you that this guy, this advocate, this fighter would never, ever lie about something like this. And so for me, that was the third red flag. And I was like, I don't think this is true. We don't know. Obviously, things still are being litigated. But I was just like that to me that was like no th- this isn't this you're doing too much to tell me he was over explaining himself and when you find people over explaining themselves they're not telling the truth nine times out of ten well I mean he was being just team too much all around in that <laughs> interview like it was one minute he was crying the next minute he was saying he fought back it was just a <laughs> lot of dramatics and I'm like Jesse like what are you doing this for people like you you're a likable person like yeah i didn't get i don't i still don't get it i we don't know if it's true or not true but it was just it was a lot of team too much from the beginning <laughs> a lot of it and he was like i fought back yeah. i want to know that, that i fought back and just to go off of this the people at northwestern hospital <laughs> need to get their lives together how 50 of y'all get fired because y'all so pressed to look up some justy smollett uh medical records tacky ass <laughs> And you can put a stamp by that. <laughs> Do your damn job. Over here, nosy. Nosy Rosie. Nosy Rosie. Go save some laughs. <laughs> they really could sue him. Or he, he should, should I'm sorry, sue him. He, he should really actually sue He's, them. That's 100%. Like, I'm yeah. not even joking. Like, he yeah. got a case there. Yeah. <laughs> need to sue their ass. Pay for this case he about to lose. <laughs> 
Oh, man. So there's been so much going on in the zeitgeist. Obviously, we're not going to touch on it too much because this case has been completely exhausting. But the R. Kelly, Gail King interview. Shout out to Gail King for uh, maintaining her composure. Tearing down another black <laughs> I'm just joking. We're joking. We're joking. But I would say that the highlight of the clip that they showed on CBS Morning, when she was like, Robert, Robert. Robert and I, I, I had I was watching TV. People was like, I felt I felt scared for you. I was reading that as R. Kelly performing. I, in no way, shape, or form did I actually think that he was going to harm Gail. I just thought he was acting. I saw someone that was very desperate to get the people to believe that he's not um, this this monster. R. Kelly is fifty two years old. <laughs> I, just everything in that interview was somebody that does not embrace being fifty two years old. <laughs> I ain't saying he got to act like an old man, but it's like, bruh. <laughs> this is very this is a lot it was a lot it was a lot for no reason it's just like calm down <laughs> you ain't told you ain't said nothing ain't nobody heard before <laughs> you ain't you ain't you can't tell us what happened in your way 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 <laughs> so unless you gonna say what happened in the way past what, what is this what is this 2019 has taught me between the college scandal, this R. Kelly, this Michael Jackson mess. It's some terrible ass parents out here. <laughs> it really is. Just yep. terrible ass parents. Yep. Yep. Like that is that is if it's one truth thread <laughs> throughout all of that. It's like people got some terrible ass parents. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's the thing. Kids are not accessories. They're not things that you can just, you know, play with and put down. Like you have to raise these these soon to be humans or soon to be adults. You know, and, and I think people just get caught up in being uh, the idea of being a parent. Oh, I'm a mom. I'm a mom. I'm a dad. I'm a dad. It's like, OK, but you have to do things with that. I don't even think that was that. I just think people are just terrible parents. Yeah, just that's like, true. Just that terrible. could be true. Just terrible. That could but be true. It's, it's all too much. And, you know, in all of this, all of the seriousness, it's a lot of hilarity. <laughs> that is. It's, it's true. You do have to, I mean, even though, like I said, we all this stuff is serious, you do have to find the laughter in some of this. You just got to laugh. Because all of it's ridiculous. Because it's so ridiculous. It's all of it's ridiculous, <laughs> man. Um, well, I am going to pick up that book that was just written. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you write a book in four days? Uh, okay, so last thing we want to do, and uh, we didn't rehearse this, but Ashley, what are some of the most upcoming some of your the movies that you want to see that's coming out soon upcoming coming soon um i'll go see us i'm not yeah. you know um i, I want to go see it just for the culture you know because everybody's gonna be talking about it but i'm not a horror fan at all um i'll go see dumbo yeah i want to see aladdin i'm not feeling well smith as a genie don't hate me <laughs> i don't love it we and, and i like I Will Smith. Love it. yeah but as 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 a disney fanatic i just thought it was a bit of an odd choice um because aladdin is heavy in the music just like you know a lot of disney films and so when they I, I'm, I'm assuming they'll probably have will rap and so i don't know i just it was something about robin williams and his singing voice and, and bringing that sort of theater aspect to the character of genie that you know we might miss with um with will smith but you know that's just my opinion um lion king oh god <laughs> i like shout out to all the people that love lion king it's, a, it's the movie is fine but like all this lion king changed my life like oh I my god how do you not, not like this, lion I, king I, it's fine it's what do you fine. mean it's fine i don't it's know what fine it's means like every other disney movie no it's, it's no fine. it is not what are you talking about but this obsession with lion king you got people 30 damn years old like lion king coming up you a grown-up man girl bye i am excited for toy story though yeah yeah i I am excited i was reading um something that tom hanks had commented on who doesn't love i know (laughs) and he was saying that the ending of this movie everybody's gonna be in tears and i was like what does that mean well okay so the end of toy story 3 had me depressed for three days so (laughs) i don't know if i want to see toy story 4 now but they but they are wrapping up this um this series it's not going to be a toy story after this at all that's what they said at toy story no i I think i think i don't know and i was kind of playing with different theories because apparently they're going to go um to a carnival or something like that and i was like is the ending going to be where woody runs into um andy again and andy has a family and he can't really you know connect with him i don't know like i was i was just trying to figure out like what what is this big ending going to be I don't know. Now you, I don't know if I want to see this now. <laughs> so, um, us intruders coming out. 
uh, with Megan Good and Dennis Quaid and Michael E. No, Lee. I'm taking a hard pass on that. <laughs> and uh, Ma with Octavia Spencer is coming out, which looks amazing. I'm, I'm not in the scary movies. I'm not either, but I, I have to say the, the, the involvement of these black leads in some of these horror movies is um, really refreshing to me. <laughs> and um, it makes me want to see the movie. It does. I'm not going to lie. That's fair. Um, That's fair. And we do have to uh, give a shout out to Devon Franklin, who I met a couple times within these past few months. Super great guy. He has a movie coming out April 17th called The Breakthrough. So make sure you guys go see that um, pretty soon. You on the payroll yet? Not on the payroll yet. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> but no, he, but no he, he's, a, he's a really good guy. He um, For anyone seeking to be a producer, I suggest you follow him at Devon Franklin on Instagram and check out all his books. He's an author, too, that's written um, a few good books. So he's definitely, from his writing, giving me um, inspiration and some guidelines to follow as I try to break into this business. So, um, you know, we'll see. We'll definitely see. Anything else you want to add? No, just want to wrap this up. Hopefully we can do more of these uh, sibling rivalry podcasts. We really enjoy it. And I think it's, it's fun for you guys. So um, until next time. Keep us on the lock. Doot.